Welcome to Black and White Cairo Ministries, where Christ is meeting you in a personal view. I'm Father John Roberts, and I'm so glad that you're tuning in. We are going to uh, pick up this third Sunday in Easter with the lectionary that comes out of the Gospel according to St. John. It's the 21st chapter, the 1st through the 14th verses. Listen as I read the account. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came into the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Here ends the reading. This is the third appearance of Christ after his death and resurrection. The first, of course, was to Mary Magdalene. The second we found to the disciples in that upper room. And now here he's on the beach. And it's a wonderful account because it lends itself to any able preacher to give a fishing story. I love this story because it hits right to my heart as a fisherman. The year was 1984, and my father and I were on a bridge that spanned over the Outer Banks of North Carolina. It was called the Herbert C. Bonner Bridge. It's still there, and it goes over to Cape Hatteras and on that seashore. And it was known for its fishing. People loved to fish around this bridge, and a lot of fish would move back and forth. And we went and we fished at night. And we had our Honda generator and we had some uh, lights and we put that light in the water on the west side of the bridge. There was a catwalk and we put down our gear and we put the light on and it was complete darkness and we waited for the minnows and the fish and we would fish through the night and we would fish the tides. Well, we were there for about two or three hours and we didn't see anything. We saw maybe a few minnows, but no fish. And we were so troubled because it was the right month, the moon was at the right phase, the tide was at the right place, we had our gear, we were there just two nights prior, we caught fish then, but now nothing. What were we to do as fishermen? I remember from that evening it was very still, there was no wind, it was very hot, and you could hear that there was splashing out in the shadows. And we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and nothing happened. Now, I was a youngster at that time. I was just a teenager. And I left my father and went walking to the opposite side of the bridge. And I went on the other catwalk that faced the ocean on the east side. Now, understand, there's nothing magical here. It's a bridge. Water is the same on one side as it is the other. So I hop across, and I listened in the darkness, and I heard splashing. I heard it sounded like the evidence of a lot of fish. So I got really excited and I came back and I told my father. My father began to contemplate, well, we got to take the cooler, the generator, all the gear, and we got to go all the way to the other side. But he decided he would do it. We had nothing to lose. So we did that. And soon as we hit the lights, I had seen this never before, but there were fish, trout, bluefish, there was all kinds of sea life right there under our feet, right there underneath those lights that evening. And I remember that we loaded up the cooler. It was so many fish that we didn't have enough room to take them back in. 
That was a blessed memory, I remember, with my father. And we risked going from one side of the bridge to the opposite side. It must have been 50, 50 feet. We had faith that something would be over there. The evidence of not what was seen, but we felt something was there. When Jesus met those disciples, he's on the shore, and he calls out to them, have you any fish? And they said, no. You can hear the disappointment these fishermen with all their gear, they had known to fish these waters, and there had been abundance before, and now nothing. The water on one side of the boat is no different than the water on the other side. But they hear him call out, put your nets on the other side. No one wanted to ask the question, but they had a feeling in their heart that that was the Savior. So we know the story and how it ended. They put the nets on the other side, and the catch was so heavy they could barely haul it in. Counted up 153 fish. You can just see them laying out those fish on the shoreline. You can just see that Jesus has got the, the grill going there on the, on the sand. He's got the rocks and the timber, and the embers are hot, and he's grilling up those fish. He's feeding his disciples. But more importantly, Jesus is speaking their language. The fisherman has to take risks. They have to make sacrifices. They go in a lot of hunches, and they have to have faith in what they're doing. But most importantly, they have to have faith in following what they know is to be true. The miracle of this story is that Jesus appeared in their life once more, and they had faith in him to provide. Today, that is what is before us as we ask for God to appear before us and to help us understand the things that we don't see, the things that we yearn for. God knows your heart. He knows that you want an abundance of joy. He knows that you want to have peace. He knows all the things that are in your heart. So when we're troubled and we can't sleep at night and we toss to and fro, how do we cast our nets on the other side if it isn't by if we use our faith. We have to have faith in Christ in order to pick up and do something new. I pray that you will consider the miracle of Christ appearing in your own life and what he's asking for you to do. And will you have the faith to follow him? Do you have any fish? No. Cast your nets on the other side. Amen. The talking points I would like to leave you with are these. When has there been a moment in your life when it just didn't seem logical, but in your heart, in your soul, you felt God's Holy Spirit was asking you to do something that was completely far-fetched, something completely opposite? Where has there been a moment in your life where God has called you to cast your nets on the other side. That's your talking point today. I would like for you to talk about your trust in God and that the miracles that happened then are very much present in your life today. Talk about these if you're willing to do so. Participate in the forum and the discussion that we've started. I look forward to hearing from you. May God continue to give you that peace. May you have the courage to cast your nets on the other side. Always go forth in the name of Christ.